Uh, I'm Thalia Kidder, and I am the lead in the women's livelihoods team in the program policy team. What we're going to do is to talk at first about the AIM-1 strategy, and then talk about the women's livelihoods work stream, which is part of the AIM-1 strategy, um, and two of the current approaches, which is women's economic leadership and agricultural markets, and also women in vulnerable livelihoods. So you're going to get a, a, a very swift run through of some of the basic um, topics on, on all four of those. So the, the AIM-1 strategy for 2010-2015 yeah, um, was developed through a considerable consultation both externally and internally. Um, and uh, this built on a very long history in livelihoods that um, livelihoods has uh, evolved over the last 15 years uh, within Oxfam um, from a more uh, focused approach or more limited approach actually on improving agricultural production and uh, increasing incomes through things like microfinance and um, sustainable agriculture techniques um, and land and, and water and other uh, production oriented interventions to then over the last 10 years really building our expertise on um, smallholders power in markets so what this means is um, looking at smallholder organizations more like businesses looking at market chains um, developing uh, diversity of products new buyers and also changing how uh, the, the policies work within market systems to be more pro poor um, Although both of those approaches are still valid and very important, it was also important to have a new strategy that would really respond to a new context. And as many of you have already um, been hearing, the, the aspects of the context that are uh, really critical are things like um, increasing risks and the fuel and financial crises, food crises, um, climate change adaptation, also in terms of livelihoods, migration and urbanization, and all of the volatility in markets that that, that um, implies. Um, we've been looking at new ways that change happens within these contexts, new communications and multi-actor strategies. And the strategy also, as you'll hear during all of this presentation, um, increasingly addresses gender inequality. Um, because we are understanding how women are both impacted by the new um, risks and the new context, and also that women are, in many cases, um, uh, significant drivers and actors of, of in change um, processes, and we need to develop their leadership. So, um, what is this? Um, next slide. Yeah. Um, the strategy defines four work streams. Um, the first is the women's livelihoods, resilience, and leadership, which we'll be talking about. Um, the second is a focus on food justice, the right to food in both urban and rural contexts, and uh, the challenge about how to enable agricultural growth in the face of climate change. The third work stream is, uh, includes a lot of our pro-poor enterprise development, um, engagement with private sector and changing market systems. Um, this includes the work that we do at a global level on fair trade and ethical trade, uh, and the name is Creating Fair and Sustainable Markets. The fourth work stream on addressing urban pol policy is newer and expanding. Um, urban livelihoods is one part of it, but also the linkages between rural and urban in terms of how families living in poverty make a living um, through uh, remittances and food exchange and circular migration. Next slide. Um, in addition to guiding the organization on focusing what we do, um, the strategy proposed good practice on how we will work in livelihoods and other programs as well. The first one on facilitation and convening, um, it is increasingly important for us to uh, facilitate and be good at facilitating multi-actor processes. So for example, um, getting smallholders 
and local government and private companies um, to be a part of the same initiative so that uh, smallholders can access the training and credit and other business development and agricultural services that they need from local government and private companies rather than Oxfam funding and providing all of the assets, tools, seeds, services, um, which is not a very sustainable strategy. Um, second, on linking advocacy and, and long-term development, um, local standalone livelihoods projects, however innovative they are, don't leverage the impact that we need without being connected to influencing and advocacy strategies. Uh, third, on uh, new media and communications, we're using new media and communications such as cell phones and radio and video, um, other platforms, not only to tell people about our programs, but as part of how we do our programs, how we reach more people, how we organize, how we influence, how we get information across, um, how we change beliefs. Uh, the fourth on learning and innovation, um, we want <coughs> Oxfam's distinctive contribution to be in innovative areas and we want to make sure that we have strategies that we are learning what is um, effective. And uh, the last one on, on women's leadership and effective economic organizations we'll, we'll hear about in a minute. This is not all of what um, the livelihoods strategy says on ways of working, but it, it's the, the headlines for you today. So women's livelihoods, uh, resilience and leadership as a, a work stream. Um, across the world, women engage in multiple and diverse strategies to make a living. And in a couple of countries where we have um, uh, done studies about this, we found that rural women have on average twice the livelihood strategies in a year that men do. Um, whereas men might say, I'm a bean farmer or, or I'm a carpenter. Um, women, uh, in this um, fictitious example, I, I should say, um, are rice farmers selling eggs, doing ironing, uh, working on a plantation for wages for, uh, during the harvest, doing weeding and pruning on somebody else's farm. Um, we could probably add uh, remittances or social transfers and being paid for cleaning and packing fish when a neighbor was ill. So um, th this is the reality of women's livelihoods. And uh, oftentimes th this diversity is invisible. Oftentimes what women do is unstable and uh, risky. Um, it is almost universally un, uh, undervalued, whether it's a task within a wider process like coffee harvest or coffee production, or whether it's some of these um, livelihood strategies that are listed. Um, they tend to be in lower margin, lower profit areas. Um, but all of these strategies are absolutely critical for maintaining the basic consumption of of families living in poverty and thus the local economies and the national economies. So um, uh, what's the proposal? The proposal is um, that not only are we going to look at uh, gender analysis in all the work that we are going to do, but why this work stream is needed and is different than what we've done before is that we are going to focus on and invest in women's livelihoods and we aim to make them visible and valued and protected. So we want to make um, women's contributions to either the local economy or the national economy more visible by, um, by documenting and, and creating the evidence for it. We want to address the exclusion of women from more profitable um, and uh, stable livelihoods. Um, we, we need to make sure that women's entitlements to controlling and owning productive resources and assets are secured um, so that, that if that is strengthened, then women will be less excluded and have a, a broader range of livelihoods. Um, we also must look at the ways that women are often crowded into occupations that are uh, lower value and uh, more invisible and improve and protect these livelihoods if we're talking about 
home-based work or on-account work, street trading, uh, cleaning, domestic work, all, all of these um, occupations and, and locations um, need to be protected and, and uh, valued because we can't just say that exit is our advice to women who are in those um, um, occupations and, and locations in markets um, because these are um, part of the economy and an essential part. We need to address care work because care work uh, fundamentally determines how women participate in, uh, in livelihoods and how they benefit and whether or not they can become economic leadership. Uh, economic leaders. So we can't um, take livelihoods as separate from care work because um, it needs to be all a part of it. Um, women's resilience. Uh, because of the multiple um, crises that um, people in poverty are facing and um, also because of the volatility of product and, and labor markets, it's very critical to make sure that, that women are aware of and can manage the risks that they face and their families face and their livelihoods face, whether these are commercial risks or social or environmental, climate change, political wars, I mean, all, all types of, of risks. In addition to that, we're looking at adaptive capacity. How can women in these ever-changing environments take advantage of new um, opportunities that come up and can claim uh, social protection and employment rights um, when the certain shocks occur. So it's not just buffering them from shocks, but it's actually saying when things are changing, do you know how to take a new opportunity and um, have a better livelihood? And uh, promoting women's economic leadership um, is uh, what we'll hear about in um, the next slides. <coughs> so, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, the um, current approaches that we have, um, because we are also resource constrained, um, is uh, women's economic leadership in agricultural markets and women in vulnerable livelihoods. And clearly we'll be delivering on investing in women's livelihoods and valuing and protecting women's livelihoods through the campaign um, that is upcoming next year on food justice in a resource-constrained world. So that is not separate to the, the M1 strategy. Just a word on gender justice as the cross-cutting um, or, or cutting across the four work streams. Um, why must we ensure gender, um, gender justice? Um, overall, because gender equality is one of the greatest barriers to sustainable development and poverty eradication. Um, and also in livelihoods, we are affirming, our belief is, that unequal power relations between women and men continue to shape livelihoods and development. And this, I think, is really important to say um, when we're talking to others, that we, we don't believe that unequal gender relations are just a cultural legacy of traditional society and families. It's not just what religions say about women's work. It's not just what, uh, how men treat women that block women in livelihoods and, and in the economy. Um, that actually economic policies and modern markets continually perpetuate the unequal roles and benefits for women and men. And they do this primarily because the way that we think of economics and the way that economics is counted and the way that economic policies are developed fail to value or recognize or even count a lot of women's work or to recognize gender-based inequality. So gender inequality in markets and in the economy is inefficient and it is ineffective. And so we need to address in our, our livelihoods how market institutions work and not only how families work or how traditional cultures work. Um, across all of the four work streams, therefore, we are going to do analysis of the costs and risks and benefits to women and men of the economic policies that we are promoting. 
we're going to understand women's and men's economic roles in um, the sectors that we have chosen to invest in, and we're empowering women to participate and lead in decision making um, uh, about the livelihoods programs. So that's the gender justice element. And I think that we can understand that that is distinct from this investing in women's livelihoods. I'm now going to turn over to Sally to uh, talk about the um, first uh, current approach.